everyone and welcome to the Geary, Stad and Steven Show, an amazing video podcast with sports stars, entertainment celebrities and other great guests, combining one host who has no legs, one host who lives in Duluth, Minnesota, and another host who seems to never be on the show. But now, on to the show with Troy, Dave, and maybe even Will. Hi again, everybody. Dave Stevens here, and welcome to a special edition of the Gary Stein and Stevens Show. I'm outside of Fenway Park where the weather is miserable. There's no baseball here today, but I'm excited because the Minnesota Twins have their home opener today. Let's toss it out to a much better location for weather. Troy Geary is at the Minnesota Twins game today, the home opener. Troy, what do you got for us? Thanks, Dave. Uh, Troy Geary here from the Gary Stein and Stevens Show, back for another season of Twins baseball here in downtown Minneapolis at Target Field. Looks like he had some great stuff out in Arizona, some great interviews. And uh, that was a real treat to watch. Uh, today, uh, the Twins battle the Cleveland Guardians for the second of three games. Uh, the first game, they dropped four to two. Uh, and uh, before the game, uh, Dick Bramer, a longtime broadcaster for the Twins for 40 years, uh, was honored. And they gave, dedicated the TV booth to him. And here are some video I took of that from earlier. Here, go ahead, Jeff. You can unveil it um, to, to commemorate uh, Dick's nearly 5,000 games as the uh, television voice of the Twins. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we're going to make a, uh, uh, a charitable contribution to Dumont Baseball, Dick's hometown. Um, Hannah Bremer was, was, was nice enough to help us coordinate that, Dick, in her role in our community engagement department. And then lastly, and maybe most importantly, from this day going forward, the home television booth here at Target Field will be the Dick Bramer television booth. So Dick, congratulations on behalf of the Minnesota Twins. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Well done. This, uh, this is heavy. Um, and by noon tomorrow, we'll be on uh, the hood of my truck. As a photo. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. That was great stuff. Dick Bramer uh, was a longtime announcer. Uh, everybody loved him. It was fun listening to him and Bert and circling people and all that fun stuff. But back today, the Twins look to get back in the win column uh, after losing their opening game to Cleveland. Uh, today, Joe Ryan battles Carlos Carrasco, so it should be a good, pretty good matchup of pitching. Uh, Twins offense has not really gotten uh, the hot start like they did last year, so... Hopefully the bats kind of heat up as the weather does. Today's going to be a great day. Yeah, Troy, lots of excitement in the air early in the season because everybody's in contention, and uh, it is a wild weekend. You've got the Twins Hope opener this weekend. you got the Women's Final Four in Cleveland. you got the Men's Final Four in Phoenix, where I was just at much better weather. But uh, we'll talk a little more Twins baseball after we pay some bills. You're watching the Geary Stein and Stevens Show. All right, here we are at this amazing Dick and Jaws Cigars with the stars and our friends at La Fralanza yeah. have given us these amazing cigars. We had a box and they're gone. Everybody here has been coming up and they say this is one of the best cigars. It's not even supposed to be here and yeah, now they're going crazy. Famers, uh, Rod Jaworski, Brian Urlacher, Warren Sapp, everybody loves these cigars. So if you go to uh, LaFralanzaCigars.com, use the code GS20, you get 20% off of one of their boxes. I mean, these things, like I said, we put them down and they were gone in seconds. Everybody loves them. I mean, this is a great event, too. I know, but holy cow, and I haven't smoked one yet. I haven't even gotten to taste it. They're just out of the Dominican Republic. They've just released them, and again, it's a labor of love for these guys that put this together. So I'm excited to have them be a part of the Super Bowl. And in fact, they were the biggest hit here, and I wish we had more boxes. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, they just started producing these things, and they cannot keep them uh, produced fast enough around the shelf. They just keep going out. But uh, they're ramping up production, so they're going to be everywhere soon. So get yours today. Go to their website, LaFredenzaCigars.com. Use the code GSS20 for 20% off a great box of 10 cigars. All right, let's go find Jaws and light this baby up. Oh, I'm excited to light this baby up. <laughs> Hi everybody, Dave Stevens here for the Geary Stein and Stevens Show from Tropicana Field, home of the Tampa Rays. And you know what? Not everybody can be a Major League Baseball player, but you can look like a million dollars. What's the best way to do that? Well, go to FreshCleanThreads.com. Don't believe me? 
That's right, you can look professional, feel good, and not spend a lot of money by wearing fresh clean threads. They have amazing shirts. They've got Henleys and polos, long sleeves, and even bomber jackets. And if you like them, you can save some money by typing in the show code GSS Show from the Geary Stein and Steven Show to save 20% off. So if you can't be a major leaguer and you want to dress like one, well, go to freshcleanthreads.com. That's freshcleanthreads.com. Tell them Dave sent you. Use that code GSS Show. Hi, everybody. Dave Stevens from the Geary Stein and Stevens Show. And you know, Troy and I are on the road all the time covering games, doing things, my motivational speaking. But I have connected with LifeWave, which has really changed my life. And it's an amazing patch that not only helps me to live my life, it keeps me very active. Tammy Wellman is joining me. And now, Tammy, you put these patches on me. It is a stem cell regeneration plan. But tell us a little bit more how it works. Yeah, so these patches are amazing. They're wearable wellness. They're non-transdermal patches. Nothing goes in your body. Your body gives off light. They capture it and they activate your body's own repair system. Your body goes to work to heal things that are in need of healing pain reduction, things like that. It gave me an opportunity to play in the Celebrity Softball Classic. This video of my base hit, I wouldn't have done it without these patches. So please, if you want to know more about this product, go to patchit.life. LifeWave, it's changing my life. Thanks, Dave. Back at Target Field here. The game's going to get underway as batting practice happens behind me. But the next series is one I'm really looking forward to. The Los Angeles Dodgers come to town. And just like you said, Dave, the Yankees and the Diamondbacks, the Yankees don't really come to Arizona very much. And same thing here with the Dodgers and the Twins. So I'm going to have some great on-the-field, hopefully, interviews with, let's say, the likes of Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, uh, Shohei Otani. You know, I mean, that lineup and that team is uh, not only uh, really pretty rich, but uh, they're a good, good team. So uh, it's going to be a great series to cover. And uh, we'll have some more from there. But, uh, Dave, uh, let's kick it over to you. You had a chance to sit down to talk to new Harvard Yard Goats manager and former Yankee, Bobby Meacham. Yeah, Troy, good stuff, man. And uh, keep up the good work. You know, I had the opportunity yesterday to catch up with our newest manager, the Hartford Yard Goats, which is the double-A affiliate of the Colorado Rockies. Bobby Meacham, former New York Yankee, been in baseball a long time. He sat down with me to talk about the upcoming season. Well, I don't usually get excited about the managers that come to town, but when you've got a former big leaguer like Bobby Meachin joining us to teach baseball in Hartford, they're going to get something out of you here. Well, I hope so. I mean, I, my job is to get these guys out there and learn something, uh, learn something new, maybe that they've never heard before, to put them over the edge, maybe get them closer to where they want to be, and that's the big leagues. How much of this is about teaching and getting them out of bad habits so they can get those major league habits and the intangibles that are going to help them get to that next level? You're speaking my language, Dave. It's like yeah, I tell them all the time, everything we do is a habit, right? So once we get to good habits rolling day after day, we can build on something. But once we go to, to a bad habit, we take a step back. So I'm hoping to, they, I told them, use every minute you, you have on that field to get better at what you do so that it takes less time to get rid of all those bad habits and we can get, uh, just keep rolling towards the good things. I know you've coached at every level and in the major leagues and everything, but at this level, is it is it going to be tough? Because you do want to win, but you don't control the roster when people go up and down and lose people to AAA in the big leagues. So how much is that a factor when you're trying to plan a team that you don't know in two months if it's the same team? Yeah, you know, I don't think it's a big deal. It really is. And I think whoever they put before me, I'm going to help them become the best they can be. And I think uh, the way we do things, the way we will do things here is, is to get the most out of these guys. And I think the, t the talent level is so, is so close, right? I mean, the teams we're playing against, they're not going to be either a lot talent, more talent or less talent than us. So I think if we go out and play the game the right way, we'll be champions. And, you know, you've had such an illustrious career. You go back to the 80s with the Yankees. You were in that Bronx madness with Reggie and Winfield and all those guys. So tell me, what of that era did you take that you now teach these guys? Well, the, the one thing I, I keep coming to notice in my life, I'm telling my son the same thing for years, is like I wasn't as good as I was supposed to be, you know, and I really believe that if, if I was as good as I was supposed to be, we would have been, you know, had a few more championships. So I think uh, one thing I want to bring to these guys is don't settle for just being really good or being okay or being good in somebody else's eyes. Try to be as great as you can be so you can really reach as, as far as you're supposed to. All right, let's flash back to those 80s and when you were playing with Billy, and I know there's a famous little known story that you could even go see the birth of your own child 
from the owner and the manager. I mean, I can't imagine that in this day and age. How do you remember that one, Dave? Yeah, yeah, that was a great story, right? It, you know, it was one of those things where all of a sudden, you know, I talked to you know, Billy, and Billy goes, "Yeah, let me talk to George and see if you can go home." And and then George got the phone, he gave me the phone, and George goes, "No, I can't go against what your manager wants. He wants you there for the game." So I was like, "So that's spread across the clubhouse pretty quick." And and uh, I think a few people in the media got a hold of that. So next thing you know, though, George came through. He came through with a, a private jet to get me home in time. So I'm, I almost didn't, but I made it just in time to see my daughter, Brooke, born. 39 years? How does time go by so fast? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I just came from her a couple months ago. She had her second baby. And I get to tell that story over and over again to her. Of those players that you played with and against and all those, who are some of those iconic ones that you're just sitting around and go, I got to pinch myself because I played with so-and-so? Well, you know, the, the couple guys I played, most of them I played with, you know, the Dave Winfield, uh, just he's almost like the Shohei Otani of that time or the Darren Judge of that time, right? He was drafted in four sports basketball. He could pitch at Minnesota. I mean, he was amazing. He was, oh, what a great player and a great person. And, you know, play uh, next to Willie Randolph was tremendous, just the, all the lessons he taught me. And, and then we still talk and he's still teaching me. So I love playing with guys like that and, and learning and hopefully passing some of this along to these players here. I got to ask because if you saw me playing, my number was always 44. I named my lizard after Reggie. What was it like to be around Reggie Jackson, both on the field and off the field? The charisma, the, you know, straw that stirs the, like, what was all of that like? Well, you know, the thing with Reggie, I was, I was there after Reggie left. So I got to hang around when he'd come in our clubhouse after when he was with the Angels and hear some things from him. But I actually, when I went back in 08 to coach there in New York, that's when I got to talk to Reggie the most. And he's, He's brilliant, a brilliant man. I'm glad to get to set, set beside him and, and really learn from him in that year. And also now he's in Houston, lives in Houston lots where I live. And uh, I get to every once in a while I'll shoot him a text and, and we go back and forth and I learn, I'm learning even more from him. Reggie's a great guy and i um, glad I really got to see him and know him and learn from him. Well, as you are now adapting to double-A baseball, we've got balls that are being called to strikes by computers. I mean, there's been a lot of changes, some good, some speeding up. What are your thoughts about all this technology and analytics and everything taken away from the purity of the game? Well, I'm just trying to keep up, Dave. You know, it's one of those things where it really hasn't changed that much. You know, they call on a, you know, a slider, I mean, a slur of a sweeper now. Uh, they're calling some balls that we just call, hey, ball rises. They got all talk about spin rate. Well, we we know what they're talking about. We just have to keep up with the lingo, so to speak, that language, so we know what they we know what it really means. And and not only that, we have to simplify it. Um, my job is to really take all that, simplify it for the players. You know, it's okay for the analysts to know a little more about stuff, but sometimes that gets in the way of the players really focusing on the simple things of the game. So my job is to do that. I I, I know what I need to do. So. I'm going to get it done for these guys. All right. Excitement here as the Yard Goats have a new man in town, Bobby Meacham. Excited to see your baseball this year. Best of luck. Oh, thank you, Dave. All right. All right, Troy, that'll do it here from Fenway. I'm going to go try to get a little dry because it has been snowing. It's rainy. This is not baseball weather. Yeah, I'm going to go get dry. I don't know where Will is, but for Troy and myself, this is Dave Stevens. Continue to follow us on all social media platforms. That's the Geary, Stein, and Stevens Show. You can find us on Roku at yourhometv.com and wherever you watch your podcasts. We'll see you later. Thank you for tuning in to the Geary, Stan, and Stevens Show. Follow us on social media, watch us on yourhometv.com, or now, we're on Roku. Download it and watch us, and thanks for tuning in. Until next time, America.